Hey, this is Matt O'Leary, and this is part two of my honorable mentions for 2022. I've covered my top 20 albums of the year, which you can find below. I've covered the prog and jazz rock, jazz fusion albums that I love from the year down below as well. And this one's going to focus more on indie pop, indie rock, and just the odds and ends and oddballs from the year that didn't quite make my top 20, but are still excellent albums. And like I said before, on any given day, these could totally be in the mix. First up is one of my favorite bands in this alt pop rock sort of modern day arena rock style. And that is Everything Everything. And I love their album Reanimator from 2020. It had one of my favorite songs from that year, which is Violent Sun. Just a banger of a festival arena rock tune. 2022 was a, a horrific or a tremendous leap for AI depending on how you see it. And this album is strongly based on that with some AI generated lyrics. It's raw data feel. Jonathan Higgs on this album, the emotional impact of his voice still comes through even though these lyrics are AI generated. And I think that just proves that it never really was about what he was saying, but how he sang it. Apparently they plugged in Beowulf to AI. They plugged in some LinkedIn terms and conditions, pretty much the polar opposites there. And once again, Higgins is the star here. His voice just so elastic, flying on a trapeze over all this indie pop studio trickery. Claps and clicks and bells and whistles. This is a very highly produced album and I love all the little textural choices throughout. Hooks just come in waves as usual with most of the sparks flying on the front half. Ultimately, it didn't stick the same way that Reanimator did for me, but I think this stadium pop, this arena rock, or electro pop sound. There really is no band with the same pedigree nowadays. I think I heard that band Big Thief put out an album this year. Oh yes, the NPR darlings, the Pitchfork heroes led by a generational talent in Adrienne Lenker. She's just such a seasoned vocalist, such a seasoned guitarist, and her musicianship, her refined talent just comes through time and time again. Dragon, New Warm Mountain, I Believe in You. I don't think anything more needs to be said about the album. It really is a career peak with so much variety on it and just song after song bringing different ideas, all top quality. And yet it's uh, not in the top list. So what's going on? I recognize the objective quality of this album, but just subjectively, it wasn't really my thing. This wasn't my Big Thief album, which will always be capacity for me. They just did so many interesting time shifts on that album and it really seemed like it was less focused on finding new sounds as it was about the writing and the song structures. I'm not huge on the country simpleton bops like Dried Roses or Red Moon or Spud Infinity. It's just not really my thing. And songs like Little Things bring awesome sounds and tones to the table but very repetitive, very bland. Like if the song doesn't have a section B, uh, then I, I, it's pretty much an instant skip. I really like chord changes, I really like structural movement and changes, but I do love some of the new sounds they're bringing, like the Radiohead-esque Blurred View. But even more than that, I think there's such a quality gap in just songwriting and interesting chord sequences on songs like The Only Place or Promises a Pendulum. You know, some of those Adrienne-only, finger-pick, guitar, softer songs. In my opinion, those are two of the best she's ever done. Next up is another indie A-lister and really a guy whose blend of influences is so unique and so compelling that he's basically his own genre. And that is, of course, Alex Giannascoli, Alex G, the pride of Pennsylvania. God Save the Animals, like the last one, is a very consistently good album, but it doesn't reach the peaks for me that past albums did, like Rocket and Beach Music and House of Sugar. He really has a formula down, like he front loads the album with some amazing songs, fully realized songs, capital S songs, and then he goes into some experimental cuts uh, with less kind of changes and more uh, vocoders, some other vocal affectation. Sometimes he sounds like a grandma on old albums, sometimes he sounds like a baby. It's all over the place. And then squeezed in at the end are maybe another couple actual songs. I really like the capital S songs on this album, Miracles and Mission and Runner, but not nearly as much as the capital S songs from past albums like Gretel, Hope, 
Southern Sky from House of Sugar or from Rocket, you know, Proud or Bobby or from Beach Music, Thorns, Kicker, Bug, like those are peak Alex in my opinion. This music is very digitized. It's very synthetic. Like at any given moment, there's little blips and, and trickery going on with the recording and the production. But uh, at the same time, he's trying to insert this folksiness to it, and you hear the sounds of the room he's in, and and those sorts of things. So it's almost like you know, generationally, we're so chronically online, but we're also reaching for some sort of meaning and some sort of uh, just down to earthness and and groundedness. And um, he's inserting that and trying to place it back into this synthetic landscape. It's very similar to Big Thief in that way. You know, Big Thief, they're doing these down-home country songs, trying to get you back in touch with your roots and kind of inserting this rustic quality to their albums. And they're also dressing like hobos, even though they're probably perfectly well off. Next is an album with some jazz fusion, some electronica, some library music and lounge music, uh, all with a very fine sense of sound design. That is Yugla Scene with Some Kind of Forever. This is an artist with many albums, I think 15, um, all of which kind of, you know, fly under the radar, haven't got much traction, but this one really caught my ears right away. I love the musky jazz on songs like Temporal Logistics or Tiny Cat or Flowers in the Wind. Those are three of my favorite tracks of any genre this year. There's a very unique thing going on here. You got uh, kind of computer music meeting ECM jazz. It's not something I imagine many people seeking out, but I love it. It's a very meditative listen for me, and I just keep going back to it. Also want to shout out the Japanese guitarist with his fourth album. It's Shintaro Sakamoto with Like a Fable. Coming from a heavier psych rock background, this is a pure pop album with flirtatious background vocals and vacation island type guitar tones. You know, if you've heard the band Little Joy, which is a side project of uh, the Strokes drummer, then I think you'll like this. There's a little bit of that going on. Not an edgy, not a super adventurous album, but very pleasant, very mellow. Um, and it, it's not just wallpaper, you know, the songs are compelling. It's a good listen for anyone interested in Japanese guitar-based music, but also just breezy psychedelic pop in general. I also greatly enjoyed Mamalarki's Pocket Fantasy or Gorilla Toss's Famously Alive. These are two albums in a very similar vein, kind of this indie pop, electro pop, psych pop, female vocal thing. There are plenty of attempts at this sound nowadays, but in my opinion, these bands are two of the best to do it. Some killer tracks on that Mamalarki album, like It Hurts, or Mythical Bonds, or uh, Building Castles. And on Gorilla Toss, I love uh, Excitable Girls and I Got Spirit, like those back to back, straight cash. The Scottish modern classical artist Andrew Wasilek put out one this year. I love the Peralian from 2020, and I love the one a couple years before then, Themes from Buildings in Space. It's not space, it's spaces. He mixes classical and jazz instrumentation with this Balearic electronic sound. It's always very melodic and very thematic based on the location that the album is, is centered in. This one's just straight ambient, like all about mood, all about texture, a very rich, easy listening. And, you know, not usually the thing I gravitate to, but I always give this guy a chance because I love him. Why not a second Scottish artist in a row? This one more of the indie pop variety. Uh, another one of my favorites, it's C. Duncan with his album Alluvium. There's a very distinctive Baroque style to everything he does, and his choral chops, his harmonic chops really come through on all his music. Every album so far has had a distinctly different identity and sound. Like Architect, his first one was home recorded. It was probably the most him, uh, just like classic Baroque pop, indie pop sort of sound. And then the Midnight Sun was this glistening dream pop, very different, but great, just a lot chillier. And then the last one, Health, was his first time in a professional studio. So a lot more polished. Alluvium is a retreat back into the bedroom studio, which I don't blame him for that. You know, it's nice to work at your own pace, but it does feel like a sidestep where the other, the, the first three felt like a major 
step forward. So a lot of the songs sound a lot like his old stuff and it just doesn't stand out in the same way. But it's very much the same tapestry of warm electronics and piano and his lush voice and acoustic guitar. Everything very romantic. And it's also impeccably arranged and sounds really good for a home studio. So he's definitely got that down. Highlights are the irresistible pop of Heaven or Bell Toll or the title track. One of my favorite records from the past 10 years is by Surface to Air Missive, a Texas band. Uh, called AV. And they are truly amazing at writing these peppy rock tunes that sound simple, but have ridiculously weird chords and progressions. Their new album Shadows Leap wasn't a total home run, but still got a ton of play this year. This is very upbeat jangle pop with sunshiny melodies and guitar twanging away and very frenetic rhythm section that just never quits. The singer and lead songwriter Taylor Ross is a master at dissonance, like he uses it everywhere. It's so good. Like this is a truly progressive pop rock band. Also love the new album from the Radiohead boys, Tom York and Johnny Greenwood with The Smile. I think this one's called The Light for Attracting Attention. So many odd riffs and recording tricks and I still just haven't feel like I've figured this one out totally. Rounding this off with some odds and ends. Love piano music. Like when I'm working, it's a perfect thing. I don't want lyrics coming in and giving me ideas, stealing ideas. Uh, so Daniel Lenoir put out a pure piano album this year. It's called Player Piano. He's a, he's a very notable Canadian multi-instrumentalist and producer who's worked with the likes of Brian Eno and Brandon Flowers and Peter Gabriel and Bob Dylan. So. Yeah, this guy's pretty well connected. I discovered him on the ambient steel guitar record from 2016, Goodbye to Language. And then it was really solidified when he did the soundtrack to Red Dead Redemption 2, which probably one of the only video games I played, I don't know, past decade. Not much of a gamer. All this guy's work is worth discovering. Like very much an unsung hero of the music industry. Last up is a little EP called Nisimono from Ginger Root. This is hypnagogic pop, kind of psychedelic pop, AOR, very breezy, uh, just so catchy, so just infectious. Uh, and I totally forgot about it. I heard it early in the year, loved it, and then just whew, let it slip by. And that's it. That's uh, pretty much all the music I enjoyed from 2022. I've already done my top 20, which is linked below. I've already done a lot of Prague and Jazz Fusion honorable mentions, which are below as well. Like this video and comment below to help me with that sweet, sweet algorithm. And as always, thank you so much for watching.